Hey guys, Rob Haynes with JL Audio here. Today we're gonna to walk you through our recommended nine step tuning process to set the input sensitivity or gain on your amplifiers. It's very important that the input sensitivity is properly set so we can get optimum performance from our amplifier without excessive clipping, which can lead to distortion, poor sound quality, and damaged speakers. So let's go take a look. Today we have a Honda Civic with an XD 400-4 V2 that'll be bridged into a two-channel operation, and an XD 1000-1 V2 that'll be wired to a two-ohm load. Before we can set the input sensitivity on the amplifiers, we'll need the following items. A digital voltmeter that has the ability to read AC voltage, a test CD or file that has a sine wave recorded at a zero dB reference level. It's very important not to use attenuated test tones. The sine wave needs to be in the frequency range for the amplifier being adjusted, so it's recommended to use a 50 Hz sine wave for a subwoofer amplifier and a 1 kHz sine wave for an amplifier handling the mid-range. You can find both 50 Hz and 1 kHz sine wave files under the Useful Sound Files article on the Help Center on JLAudio.com. You will also need to know the recommended output voltage that the amplifier needs to be set to. The Amplifier Level Sending Guide article on our Help Center provides a complete list of our amplifiers, the various configurations they might be used in, and the recommended output voltages as well. So now that we know what our target output voltage is and the tools that are going to be required, let's get started. First, we're going to need to disconnect the speaker wires from the amplifier. Simply remove the speaker wire from the amplifier's outputs. The second step is to make sure any processing from the source unit and amplifier are turned off. This means we want to make sure the bass and treble on the head unit are set to zero, the fader and balance are centered, and any additional settings such as loudness and custom equalizers are turned off. We want a completely flat signal to work with here. Next, completely turn down the input sensitivity on the amplifier. This will be a counterclockwise turn. If the amplifier has either a low level or high level sensitivity switch, set it to the low position. Set the head unit's volume to three quarters of full volume. This allows for reasonable gain overlap with moderate clipping at full volume. Using the recommended voltage chart found on the JL Audio Help Center, determine the proper output voltage for your amplifier based on its application. For this vehicle, we'll be using an XD 400-4 V2 that'll be bridged at a four ohm load with a recommended output voltage of 28.2 volts. For our subwoofers, we'll be using an XD 1000-1 V2 that'll be wired to a two ohm load and a recommended output of 44.7 volts. Since we are tuning two amplifiers that handle different frequency ranges, they will need to be tuned separately. First, let's start with the XD 400-4 V2. After verifying the speakers are disconnected, Go ahead and play the 1 kHz sine wave at 3 quarter volume. If possible, play the track on repeat so you aren't rushed during the adjustment process. Make sure your digital voltmeter is set to read AC voltage and connected to the speaker outputs on the amplifier. If possible, it's a good idea to tighten it into place with the set screws. Since we are working with an amp that's being bridged, we'll want to meter the front left positive and the right front negative outputs, as well as the rear left positive and rear right negative outputs. For a traditional four channel amplifier application, you'll meter the positive and negative outputs from each channel individually. Now that the probes for our voltmeter are attached, slowly increase the input sensitivity of the amplifier until you reach the recommended voltage we determined in step five. In this case, 28.2 volts. Certain amplifiers in the JL Audio lineup have the ability to accept both a low level and a high level signal. If excessive voltage is being read with the input sensitivity dial turned all the way down, switch the amplifier's input from low to high and readjust to the recommended voltage. Now that our mid-range amplifier is set, let's dial in the XD1000 slash 1V2 as well. First, change the sine wave from the 1 kHz track to the 50 Hz track. Next, we're going to slowly turn up the input sensitivity until we hit our recommended output voltage of 44.7 volts. Now that both amplifiers have been set to their maximum unclipped output levels, turn down the radio and power it and the amplifiers down. 
reconnect the speakers, and begin to listen to the system with music at a moderate level. The idea is to listen and see if one amplifier is overpowering the other, such as the door speakers being louder than the subwoofer. If one of the amplifiers is playing too loudly, turn down the input sensitivity of that amplifier until both amplifiers are blending nicely together in the vehicle. When doing this, always make sure to turn down the loudest amplifier and not turn up the other amplifier. This defeats the purpose of the nine-step tuning process by permitting excessive clipping into the system. All right, so now that the input sensitivity on our amplifiers is properly set, we've reduced the potential for excessive clipping, we have minimized our distortion, we've improved the reliability on our product, as well as having phenomenal sound. Thanks for watching, guys.